Hey guys, this is Robert Ham with Robert Ham Photography coming at you with another tutorial. Today I'm actually going to be showing you how I use wireless tethering via the iFi card uh, or through a camera's Wi-Fi settings. Specifically, we're talking about the Fuji X100S today. Now, here's my uh, website, and I happen to absolutely love the Fuji uh, cameras. It's, uh, I've started shooting Fuji recently in the past year with the X-T1 and I have completely and totally fallen in love with it and uh, here's a couple of nice things that you can actually see from the the uh, the camera that I shot itself. I'm gonna pull in just a couple of little quick photos for you right here and um, man these are pretty shots. We actually this wedding's coming up this October so uh, stay tuned. Now these are gonna be a little bit small as we're looking through them right here but I just want to kind of pull a couple of them up and show you absolutely gorgeous pictures. This is done using the 55 to 200 millimeter lens on the Fuji X-T1. And uh, these portraits, these images are great. Here, as you can see, um, I shot on Velvia. You may not be able to tell that, but I, I did shoot RAW, but I used the Velvia mode, which um, I was not shooting RAW plus JPEG. I was just shooting RAW. But shooting with a Velvia gave me that... Um, that uh, through the viewfinder look that I was absolutely going for, that punchy kind of look. So I was able to select a mood of my photo that I could then process later. Um, here, uh, it would just have a nice, I, I used Photoshop to add the, the date there so it looked like they kind of scr scribbled it in. And just an um, absolutely beautiful girl, very handsome guy, and a great couple. <laughs> nice little, little smiles as they're going to get married here this October. Uh, and and you, can, you can kind of see right here as we come through and zoom in, you know, this is, they're fishing, so they brought a fishing line, a uh, reel and a rod, and uh, we're shooting uh, at a pier uh, on the beach. We were shooting uh, originally underneath the pier. This is in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and these are just some really cute shots, as you can see. So um, I'm really proud of these, and uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a couple of other things real quick. This is the camera that we're actually talking about today. Now, the camera that created the images that you just saw was not this camera. This is the uh, Fuji X100S, as you can see up there. And uh, it's a companion camera that I bought for my X-T1, but I didn't realize that I was going to fall in love with this camera. And uh, so this is what we're talking about. Let's go. Now, the X100S, if you can find it, is around... Here we go. If you can find it, it's around uh, $800 new right now. I must have bought mine just before it was uh, discontinued. So you can't even buy it now. So I um, I feel pretty comfortable about that. The next camera that you could purchase would be the X100T. I got mine for around um, $850. And uh, let's see. The X100T... Let's see, where is that? It should be around $1,300. Bucks. Yeah, around right here, $1,300, um, as you can see. So I saved $450 bucks by buying the model year older, but uh, I didn't really lose too much. There are some differences, mind you, and uh, I weighed those options against $450, and I decided uh, to get uh, the X100S. I have the Fuji app for my X-T1, and it works very well. What it doesn't do very well is if you shoot in RAW, you have to go back and convert RAW to JPEG, and then it can sync. Here, I'm using the iFi card. I'm using an iFi Mobi card, an 8-gig card. I'm shooting in RAW plus JPEG, and I'm able to just sync the images over. Specifically, the JPEG images just go on straight up. Now, the same thing would happen if you were using your um, Fuji app, but I think the iFi app actually works more seamlessly. I can turn this app on and leave it in my pocket and then go out and shoot for two hours and then uh, uh, with the X100S and then open it back up and then the images are there. And that's a very important thing. With the Fuji app, it disconnects. Even though it says it'll stay connected, it disconnects. Um, and it's a little more buggy, so this is nice. But I don't want to edit any photos in here. So this is just to get the images onto my phone. Now, why would I want the images on my phone? Well, here's one reason want them there because I'm using Lightroom Mobile. Now, as I use Lightroom Mobile, when the images come onto my phone, because my Lightroom Mobile is synced to my computer, well, all my images sync over to my Mac by the time I get back to the house. Now, these are JPEGs. Yes, we talked about that. But we also need to realize that 
uh, RAW files will sync over if you are using the Mobi Pro card. And I just have the mobile card. I, had, I don't have the Mobi Pro card. But if you have the Mobi Pro card, then your RAW images will sync over. And that means that as your RAW images sync over to your phone, your RAW images will then also sync to your Mac. So this is a very seamless integration. So I'm trying to showcase something here. This lens is very versatile. Uh, when we look, his head's not out of shape. You know, lots of times when people would say, oh, you use a 23 or 35 mil equivalent lens, you know, you're going to get some distortion and everything. Well, no, you have to understand your your, your equipment. So for here, when I took this picture, um, I, I needed to actually square the the lens and the camera off with Brandon so that I didn't create a, a large forehead or a, a, a narrow, narrow chin, but instead showcased him in a very um, flattering way. This also is our... Uh, just just a JPEG image. And look at this right here. I mean, look at the noise. We're going to go ahead and check out and see what we've got. 1 100th one of a second ISO 320. There is no noise. At F2, the F2 allows us to just throw the background directly out of focus and still maintain quite a bit of detail. Now, we could develop this here, and that's the other thing I'm talking about. But we'll move on to some other photos. I went to the farmer's market later on to shoot, and... <laughs> see Alice at the stand for help. I love that. I mean, it's just, there's my, you can't ride in my little red wagon. <laughs> they, well, Alice apparently was in the little red wagon, um, and I love that. Walking into the farmer's market, I saw honey, just loads and loads of honey. And what you'll notice here between these two are, when I was shooting, and these are the JPEGs, I was using um, uh, the shooting mode of Astia right here, which are soft, defocused backgrounds. Well, slightly defocused, but just softer color, colors, more of a, a medium contrast kind of curve, and not as much punch in the color. But then turn over to Velvia, and my goodness, this just... I, I love Velvia because it's so punchy, and it, it maintains really high quality with, with, with colors reproduction. But look here. Um, once again... Uh, this is just an absolutely beautiful image. Let's see if we can actually get this to tell us what we were shooting at. It should, but it's it out there. Well, so we're ISO 1000 f2, um, and we're one thousandth of a sh uh, second on the shutter speed, and that's pretty cool. When we zoom in here, look at this. You can see the ripples in the glass. Now, there is no, and I'm going to tell you now, there is no noise. There's no noise. There's no chroma noise. Uh, there's I, there was, there's grain. The grain is achieved by that Fuji um, X Trans sensor, that Fuji that particular Fuji array. But um, but yeah. So I just wanted to showcase this, and also look at the the way that we reproduce the colors. Specifically, uh, we're going to talk about here. Look at that. You know that green, and this green comes down here, and it creates a beautiful little shaft. I'm going to say this area right here, as you can see. That area right there going in those directions, that is the focus. Um, that's your that's your focal plane right there. So uh, this can, is th this glass of honey is about eh, maybe four inches wide. And we're cutting a swath down it that's about two inches wide. So that F2 aperture really gives you the ability to get in there and have some extremely shallow depths of field. For this picture, I was literally at the corner of the table. I love this open sign when I saw it, by the way. This texture, this color, this organic feeling, it just is wide open. And uh, that's one of the reasons that I liked it. But when we zoom in, too, once again, this is just a very, very nice-looking JPEG. I mean, this is clean. This is real clean. Here's a more of a wide shot. I'm actually sitting in an area right over here, but I'm sitting down just beside that. So I'm shooting up and that way specifically. And I want to shoot that way so that I can get this kind of perspective. I'm trying to showcase this area up here. Remember, I just took a picture of that open sign right there. Here's where it says open right there. All these things really speak to me. And so that's what I'm feeling about while I'm, while I'm actually photographing this. There are some other things here that I want to bring into, into play. Okay, so here's the first part. And let's see if I can actually get everything to pop up real quick. Are we able to? Uh, yeah, we're not able to. Uh, now, there we go. We're loaded. Okay, so we're loaded and good. Let's see if I can get my information about this to pop up. Okay, so 175th of a second. 
at F2, ISO 200. Okay, so what I find is that ISO 200, I'm actually in macro mode. It doesn't say that here, but I'm in macro mode. I want to make a little spot on Kitty Cat's nose. I want us to remember that. Okay, oops. Uh, because, just think about that spot there for a second, because when we zoom back out, we're going to realize that his little nose is in focus, but it's a little bit soft. So over and over again, shooting in macro mode, I realized that uh, the F2 aperture and macro is just a little bit soft, guys. Now, is it bad by any means? No, it kind of gives a velvety look. Um, Lens Baby came out with a new lens for several camera systems, Nikon, Canon included, as well as Fujifilm, called the Velvet 56, I believe. The, uh, and it's supposed to, you know, it's a 56 1.2 lens, or 1.4 lens, um, and it's got a velvet feeling to it, wide open. Well, this is, it takes this effect and throws it to extreme. This one, actually, is just, um, the focus isn't sharp when we zoom in, but... I think that has as much to do with the F2 as anything else. Here, I took macro mode off. Notice I'm nowhere near as, as close. And I actually stepped back and just kind of got him into focus. And uh, let's see if we can see. Will it pop up real I took macro mode off. We're still shooting at F2. We're just not in macro mode, which gives it that extended focusing capability. By, uh, by it's, it's not an internally focusing lens, so it extends out from the barrel just a little bit further. And as you can see, by doing that, I get much... A much nicer shot immediately. Here we go. Um, I've also edited this some, so there's a little clarity brought in. But this is the shot again. Once again, not in macro. And as you can see, we're, we're much better and focused. Here is macro. I turned macro on again just to kind of look. And as you can notice, um, his eyes in macro mode are really the only thing that are in focus. This whole area right here, everything else just kind of gets thrown out. This is Bruiser, by the way, my new best buddy, Kitty Cat that uh, is run, runs around the Virginia, Virginia Beach Farmer's Market. Much better, as you can see here. This one really nailed focus. Um, so kind of fiddly to get that, but also this was my first day shooting with the camera. And what better uh, thing to shoot than a kitty cat? Gato. Okay, uh, yeah, a little place setting. And we're going to come and just kind of move back out from here. I want to show you these as we go through because they were important for me. So uh, I'm playing with the macro again, and I'm trying to get uh, these bugs in focus. And it's a backlit subject, and the camera's doing very well. We're 1 1,000th at F2. Wow, uh, that's pretty interesting. Now, I don't recall exactly what my ISO, ISO was 200. ISO is 200 right there. I'm actually shooting with the ND filter at this point. So I have gone ahead popped in the ND filter, it's a three-stop filter, so we're actually at one eight thousandth of a second is what would have been required, but because we've got three stops, 1,000 to 2,000, 2,000 to 4,000, and 4,000 to 8,000, because of that built-in three-stop ND filter, I'm able to shoot into the sky on a bright sunny day and get a proper exposure for um, uh, this little guy. Uh, let's see if it'll even show us our exposure. Uh, it's trying to. I think screen recording while we're doing this is, is giving it a little bit of cause for pause, but that's okay. I did find that trying to capture the bees is kind of tough. I didn't, I was not very successful here in capturing the bees. I was here, and the bee, though, there it goes. So here's what happened. Uh, here I decided it was time to engage my EFX 20 flash. And as you can see, I've moved from 1 1,000th to 1 uh, 170th at F5. Okay, so I stopped down the lens from f2, uh, which made it darker. I brought my um, shutter speed down as well, and then I turned that flash on. And I think I was under, I think I was exposing at TTL exposure of a minus one third ev um, exposure value, and that's what got me here. And I was I was happy with that. Still want to play with it a little bit more. The, this mailbox is great. The texture on it is awesome. I like it. it feels a little green. We could change that pretty easily. The other thing I want to come in uh, is getting over here. Here is, wow. So there you go. This shot is straight out of the camera JPEG. This is what happens when you nail your flash. Um, I was actually on here. I stopped using the TTL flash. I was using my ND filter, my three-stop ND filter. I was also um, 
as you can see, at F3 ISO 200, and I was using, what else was I using? Uh, my EFX, I was using 1 64th power on my EFX 20. And this is amazing. I mean, this is absolutely amazing. So, uh, just getting this right here was, was, was a blessing. It was beautiful, beautiful shot. And um, that's what happened. So, it took me about two hours of messing with the flash and the settings and just getting used to the camera. And now, I'm able, I've got a, a good idea, just like anything else. But I've got a good idea of what to do in order to nail these shots. Once again, I was playing with the flash just to see how far away I could be and at what exposure values of uh, I could use on the flash. You know, 164th, 132nd, things like that. Okay, let's move from there and go into today. Because, uh, as you know, we can't end it there. We come back. Okay, Is that that? No, I may not have imported any of those photos. Let's go back out to... Yeah, there we go. So today, now now none of these have been edited. We're actually going to go ahead and, and, and do some of that. I want to show you something here. Uh, here is my good buddy boy. I love him to death. Uh, Velvia, once again, shooting with this JPEG and RAW. JPEG is what you're seeing. Uh, a little uh, e easy to white balance. We just need to bring that over there into Photoshop. But we're going to pick a different picture in a moment. <laughs> my boys. I love taking pictures of my boys. There we go. This is out shot uh, nailed much better with autofocus, and I'm at an aperture of an f4 here. So at f4, um, as you can see, it's much, I'm maybe four inches, five inches, but it's much sharper. Hand holding this at one, 125th of a second or something. Yeah. And of course, I had, um, uh, I did have some flash going on as well. Let's, <laughs> my boy. So that ND filter, we got a sunset in the background, and I'm just playing around with the ND filter. Uh, so I, I'm using the ND filter and exposing for the sky, and then using the flash to fill my sun. And that's what we get, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm playing around with that. And here we go. Here's exactly what that can do. So no light, uh, ambient light picture. Okay, check it out. Ambient light. Nice exposure. Nice warm orange tones coming in from the, the sun that's setting. Fill flash, right? So I'm thinking now um, at one one thousandth of a second, which is pretty cool. So there's two completely different looks that you're able to achieve. So if you want that sunset look, then being able to shoot into a, uh, a setting sun sky and use fill flash like this and sync up to a thousandth or two thousandth or eight thousandths of a second, depending on what your aperture is, it's um, pretty awesome. And by the way, I was... Uh, was it f4 here? So, uh, so yeah. No, or 5.6. I was at f5.6. So, there we go. Guys, I just kind of wanted to show this to you and uh, bring it together. So, now, let's talk about this again. Let's pretend this had been anything in particular. I don't know. It could have been a, a paid gig, you know, go out and shoot these jobs for a commercial client. You know, that actually, it very well could have, couldn't it? You know, it very well could have been a cool gig shooting for... Holland Produce, you know what I mean? So the shots were done on the X100S. The iFi card was used to import them. Let's go ahead and give it here. They, let's do this over. The shots were taken on the X100S, okay? The iFi card was used to import them, okay? Lightroom was used to then uh, correct them, right? And then when you're said and done, you can go ahead and copy, share, move, play, whatever you want. And this would be for printing specifically. Connect to one of my printers. Or email it. Or upload it. You know, if I wanted to, I could upload it to my client gallery. I could upload it to Flickr. You could upload it if you had a Smug Mug account, a 500 Pix account. You could do all that from right here. And this is pro quality work. So really, we've shown you how you can take your X100S, have it blast, Use nothing more than an iFi card, your cell phone, and a Lightroom or Snapseed or whatever photo, what other photo editor you'd like to use, and then deliver it. So you can actually create with this platform. Most cell phones you can get that would run these can be free. You want to get a flagship phone, you can even get the iPhone for just a couple hundred bucks down or free. If you want an iFi card, 30 bucks. So you've got 
less than a thousand dollars in some cases, maybe twelve hundred dollars at the max with an X100S, a phone, of course, on contract subsidized, um, and an iFi card that you can begin doing commercial and portrait work for. So really, I I'm just amazed by that. Anyways, guys, my name is Robert Ham. I'm with Robert Ham Photography. Catch me over there on Twitter at Rob Ham Photo. You can find me on Facebook at YouTube at forward slash Robert Ham Photography. And I've had a great time with you guys today. Thanks for watching.